Hello, everybody. Welcome into another episode of the Fantasy Pros Football Podcast. I am Ryan Warmly, joined on this Tuesday morning by Andrew Erickson and by our guest, Alfredo Brown of Football Guys. Thank you so much for coming on again. Second time on the Tuesday show this season. We're happy to have you back. As always, we are going to dive right in to the Week 10 Buy Low, Sell High running backs on this show. Now, the number one most traded running back is actually a guy we're going to talk about later in the show. So we'll start with the number two most traded running back so far in the last couple of days, and that's Gus Edwards, Gus the Bus. Alfredo, I'll start with you as our guest. Are you buying, selling, or holding a Gus Edwards right now? So I want to say sell, but I really don't know how many people are like, yes, let me go and buy as much Gus Edwards as I can. I feel like even the most uh, beginner fantasy player is looking at it and saying like, okay, six touchdowns in three games. That sort of seems pretty unsustainable. Uh, And then you you dive a little deeper. The schedule gets harder with Cleveland, Cincinnati, the Chargers, who in my head, they had still been the same Chargers of last year that were just really bad against running backs. And they've been getting better and better and better. And we saw them last night against Brees Hall. And then you've got a bye week for Baltimore. So I I, like I said, I want to say sell. I just don't know who's actually going to buy. So if you have them, just Ride the Gus bus wave, man, and just just hold on to it. It's interesting because I do think the offense as a whole is trending in the right direction. You know, you saw some spottiness in the first month of the season. New offensive coordinator, guys don't play in the preseason. That was kind of to be expected. So it's getting better. I mean, they've dropped 30 points the three straight games. Like, there's going to be scoring opportunities because they do like running him near the goal line. We also saw Keaton Mitchell break out in a major way and on such a few number of carries. I saw you were tweeting off radio that he looked like Devon A. Chan and you're, you know, that stat line wouldn't have looked out of place for Devon A. Chan. So there's all these factors going into the backfield. At the end of the day, though, Gus is the guy that I think is leading the backfield on a really good offense and it's going to get scoring opportunities. He just doesn't actually touch the ball all that much. Eric, Erickson, what do you make of this? I mean, it sounds like you just described Raheem Mostert uh, with Gus Edwards. And who? what do we talk about Raheem Mostert in the beginning of the season? He was a sell high. And again, it de- depending on where you end up selling him, you know, may have worked out in your favor. But ultimately, as we head into the Dolphins bye week, if you had moved off Mostert, you're probably feeling pretty good about yourself, even though Mostert's had a couple decent games, but not anything like his red hot start. And that's the same with Gus Edwards. I mean, the guy scores five touchdowns the last two weeks. Like, just not going to continue to score this touchdown at this high of a rate, even if he is the goal line back, because guys just don't run that efficient, you know, every single week. Again, he's facing the Browns this week. It's a really bad matchup for running backs. So, yeah, I, I want to get out of Gus Edwards. And look, it's one of these things where you can try to trade him, you package him to get another, another running back, maybe one of these buy low running backs. Don't make him the focal point of the deal. Like, that's the main thing there, because people will look at it as, oh, they're trying to sell the high on Gus Edwards. Well, don't make him the only part of the pie because he has value the thing is when people put two players together they're usually just two bad players gus edwards is not a bad player and anyone know everybody knows that like he has value but that means you can move him i think in a deal with another player so that's how i would approach it i would i would try to sell high i guess and if i can't move him it's like well then just keep him alfredo before we get to some uh trades that have actually gone down in finish Rose my playbook in the last day um, that i want to get your opinion on i do just want to ask you are we gonna overreact or or properly react to this Keaton Mitchell breakout and say we'd rather have Mitchell than Edwards moving forward or we still like Gus just because of the goal line work I mean I think it's fantasy football and it wouldn't be fantasy football if we weren't overreacting (laughs) every single week like this is just what we do no matter how much we preach stay patient stay patient it's tough because fantasy football is a week-to-week game so it's just you you look at at week 10 you're like I really need a win and maybe Keaton Mitchell is going to be that guy I, I just tweeted this before the show is that if you go out and you're spending fab on Keaton Mitchell, don't expect him to a do what he did this past week or B. I don't even think he's necessarily going to be a starter for your roster this week going up against the Cleveland Browns. You're going into a three running back mix there. So I think you're holding him and stashing him for maybe the playoffs as his role starts to grow. This is what good teams do. They unveil new wrinkles as the season goes on. And even uh, John Harbaugh uh, admitted, he's just like, I, you can't keep a guy like that off the field. So we're just going to let them rotate in and whoever's got the hot hand is going to keep going. Erickson, what do you think about the comparison between Edwards and, and Mitchell going forward? Look, I think that Edwards is someone that they trust, but it's one of these things where, well, we're going to use Gus Edwards until we find something better. Like that's kind of the MO with Gus Edwards. Like he's solid, he's steady, five yards per carry, does what's blocked for him. But I mean, he doesn't have that juice like Mitchell does. Neither does Justice Hill. 
It's it's so obvious. So again, maybe it's just Mitchell. Okay, this week he takes over for Justice Hill. You know, Justice Hill was playing in garbage time, like with the backups. Like, why was he doing that? Wouldn't that be the perfect time to play Mitchell? Maybe if they value Mitchell more than Justice Hill, okay, now he's number two in the depth chart. What if Edwards gets banged up? Edwards has been hurt the last couple of years. He's been banged up. So, yeah, I think that would not surprise me at all if we look up and be like, oh, what do you know? Key Mitchell's now the, the starter, just like we did with Achan. Like, you know, he ripped off a big run. It's like, oh, he can't sustain this. He can't keep doing it. Oh, buddy, he does it again. So I wouldn't doubt him, especially because Mitchell, he was one of these players we talked about, like, what was like a month ago where he was getting added everywhere. And I was like, wait, what's going on? Like, why is this guy getting added? It was like Adam Schefter that was yeah. reporting that they they absolutely loved him. And it's like, don't forget about that because Schefter did the exact same thing last year with Kyron Williams. Like he talked about that a lot, you know, on a lot of his, you know, on his Twitter profile, on a lot of his podcasts. So it could be the Mitchell thing all over again. It's like, hey, the Ravens are like, let's use this guy. So, yeah, I think uh, wouldn't be surprised if that happens. All right, let's get to some of these trades that have actually gone down. Alfredo, would you trade Gus Edwards for DJ Moore? Ooh. I mean, I hate to do the cop out. It it definitely depends on the makeup of your roster. I would assume you're probably not doing that great at running back. If you've got Gus Edwards on the team, you probably don't have a whole lot of options. So I'd probably just hold on to Gus Edwards uh, until further notice there. But if you are hurting for wide receiver, I think DJ Moore remains a, a top 20, top 24 guy. It just It's definitely going to depend on roster construction for me. It's probably fair to assume most people playing fantasy are have a need at running back and are not you yeah. know, flush with guys there. Uh, it's kind of like tight end. Like if you have one that you can start every week – are you moving him or are you just going to keep starting him right yeah uh next one here gus edwards plus nico collins for josh jacobs what do you think about that alfredo gus edwards nico collins for josh jacobs i would i would take the josh jacobs side on that i still i think that i'm super excited about josh jacobs going forward i think he's got potential to be a top five running back rest season that that raiders team is so pumped with antonio pierce who has come out and just said it I want to feed Josh Jacobs the ball. We need to run the ball. He's kind of got a little bit of like Dan Campbell-esque vibe going on where we're going to be the smash mouth team and everyone's super excited for it. So yeah, I'm, I'm all in on, on Josh Jacobs the rest of the season. Last one, Gus Edwards and Najee Harris for Kenneth Walker. Yuck. Um, <laughs> I think I would... Hmm. I think that the arrow is trending downward for Kenneth Walker, but I think that the arrow is so far down for Najee Harris <laughs> that I might just stick with Walker there uh, because I do think that he's going to have that higher floor and higher ceiling than Gus Edwards. So I think I'd go Walker in that instance. Erickson, any of those three trades stand out as ones you would definitely do or not do? Again, it was Gus Edwards for DJ Moore, Gus and Nico Collins for Josh Jacobs, Gus and Najee Harris for Kenneth Walker. I like the Josh Jacobs one the best. I think you're just kind of consolidating roster spots. You're getting extra roster spot. Josh Jacobs, you just play him every week and you feel good about it. Like, I don't think you have to worry about matchups or anything like that, whereas the other players are a little bit more matchup dependent. It's rather like lo- like having the luxury to just like lock in a stud, you know, whether he has good games or not, like 20 touches per game, like you're not worried about Jacobs any single week, even in tough matchups, whereas Edwards, um, Nico Collins can have way more up and down games. There are always fun questions around the NFL this time of year, like who are the pretenders, who are the contenders? Now we're more than halfway through the NFL season, but DraftKings Sportsbook is still pumping out unbeatable offers every single game. New customers can bet just 5 bucks on anything to get $200 instantly in bonus bets. And DraftKings isn't stopping there. All customers can take advantage of a sweetener offer every game day this November. The Week 10 slate doesn't look amazing, but there are still nine games with an early spread of 3.5 points or less on DraftKings, so there should be tons of close finishes this week. Plus, I cannot wait to watch C.J. Stroud and Joe Burrow go head to head in Cincy. That's my favorite game of the week, even though the Bengals are laying a full touchdown against the Texans. However, you guys plan to bet that one, get in on the football action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Download the app now and use code Fantasy Pros. New customers can bet just $5 on anything to get $200 instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code Fantasy Pros. The crown is yours. Guys, the next so in this case, third most traded running back is Bijan Robinson. Obviously, just the talking point of fantasy the last couple of days continues to be Arthur Smith and how he uses his stud players. So, Erickson, we'll start with you this time. Are you buying, selling, or holding on Bijan? 
Oh, I'm buying Bijan. There, there are, there's blood in the streets when it comes to Bijan Robinson. People do not want this guy. People want to see Arthur Smith get fired. It's, I mean, Arthur Smith is going full on Grinch right now. People are like, we don't like this guy at all. We want nothing to do with this guy. Um, and that's why it's a perfect opportunity to buy. You know, looking at Bijan Robinson, I still think that he's still seeing a decent amount of work in the offense. Look, Tyler Ogier hasn't really been lighting up the score, but he had negative yardage in the first half of last week's game. And I get that he's annoying around the red zone, but that's kind of been the case all year long. But, you know, they had a drive at the red zone. They gave it to Algier a bunch of different times. Bijan didn't play, and they didn't even score. So I think that with the Falcons dropping games, they're going to have to change something up. And what do you think that they would do? Like, probably feature their rookie running back more, who, again, from an efficiency standpoint, there's nothing wrong with B. John Robinson. Like, he has looked explosive. He has looked the part. When he gets the ball, he is good. So it's not a talent concern here, which is why I like buying it, because you're not buying a bad player, like, hoping the situation changes. It's like you're buying a good player with the number one schedule for running backs the rest of the season. He's playing the Arizona Cardinals this week. Like, you need to forget about what happened in the beginning of the year. Yes. Was he worth a first-round pick? No. Like, but that's ancient history at this point. Like, we're trying to project forward from Week 10 onward, and looking at the schedule, Bijan Robinson is going to light the scoreboard up if he gets more touches, especially as a ball carrier. And one thing I want to point out, too, is you guys remember Jonathan Taylor's rookie year? Didn't do a lot in the first half of the year. Didn't do a lot. We see this all the time with rookie running backs, with rookies in general. They break out in the second halves of seasons. So with the stock so low on Bijan, who again, we don't know what the after effect of that weird headache game is. You don't know if they're limiting his snaps or whatever because of that. That's just another kind of quirk thrown into his outlook. This is the time to buy. And if you haven't, you got a hole. Like, I'm sorry, because you're not going to get a fair deal for him whatsoever. So my goal this week in all my leagues, I want to get Bijan Robinson on every single of my fantasy teams. And I'm going to ride him into the fantasy football playoffs with the Falcons, or excuse me, the, yeah, the Falcons playoff schedule is so good for running backs. So Bijan Robinson, long story short, I'm going to buy him. Yeah, Alfredo, same question, buy, uh, sell, or hold. But also, Bijan is at RB10 in the half PPR rankings for rest of season, according to the experts. Is that too high, too low, or just right? Um, you know, I, I've got him a little bit lower than that, but like just outside of it. I think I have him at like 11 or 12. I'm actually doing an episode on that today over at Football Guys uh, for the running back rankings rest of season here. And a lot of what Erickson is saying is correct. I mean, my heart says buy, right? Like this is a very good player. You want to go and buy B. John Robinson if you have the opportunity. However, my head is telling me, stay away from him. You can't just keep stepping on the rake over and over, believing that Arthur Smith is going to give us what we want. He hates us. He hates you. He hates your family. He hates <laughs> fantasy football. He hates B. John Robinson. Like, I, just, I don't get it. B. John's had two carries inside the 10-yard line. It, why would you do that for a player that is so good? Instead, you're out here drawing up passing plays for John New Smith and, and sweep runs. And it's just, what are we doing? I will say this, Erickson, you're 100% right. The fantasy playoff schedule and remaining schedule is great for the Falcons, right? He's got Carolina, Indy, Chicago, all throughout the playoffs. And so if I'm a contender and I can get, I think it's reasonable to actually think you can get RB2 pricing for Bijan. If I can get that, I'm doing it. If not, and I'm a contender, I don't think I need to risk going out there and starting Bijan Robinson and getting five points because Arthur Smith decided, you know, I'm going to change things up this Sunday and give John U. Smith goal line carries. So yeah, I, it's... It's a really tough one for me. I want to buy, but I just can't. Arthur Smith, pretty easily the most hated man in, in fantasy uh, at this point in the season. Let's do some real life trades that have gone down with Bijan Robinson. Erickson, starting with you. Bijan Robinson for Deontay Johnson. Would you make that trade? Yes, 100 times out of 100, I'm taking Bijan. Like, I like Deontay, but it's like he doesn't offer nearly the ceiling that a Bijan Robinson can offer, in my opinion. How about Bijan Robinson for DJ Moore plus Justin Fields? I'll take Bijan. And lastly, Bijan and Jalen Waddle for Ramondre Stevenson and Jamar Chase. Again, that's Bijan and Waddle for Ramondre and Chase. I would take the Chase side uh, just because I want Chase. Like that's he's the best player in the deal, so I would take. Uh, that side. What do you think about those trades, Alfredo? Again, it was Bijan for Deontay Johnson, Bijan for DJ Moore and Justin Fields, and then Bijan and Waddle for Ramondre and Chase. Do you like any of those? The B 
Bijan for Justin Fields and DJ Moore stands out to me too. I just I don't know that I want any aspect of that Bears offense going forward. The the Bijan over Deontay was another one that was good. I think those two clearly stood out to me as I would much rather have Bijan in those instances. Before you guys listening make any trades, you need to check out our trade analyzer at fantasypros.com slash my playbook or on the fantasy football my playbook app. Instantly see who wins any trade and how it shifts the balance of power in your league for the week for the rest of the season even beyond for dynasty leaguers stay ahead and play smart with the trade analyzer on fantasypros.com slash my playbook and on the fantasy football my playbook app guys let's jump into the buy low running back segment and alfredo we'll start with you who's your top buy low running back right now so i kind of cheated here i'm not really giving you a buy low it's more of a buy high on elite talent and i think that right now because the part of the season we're getting into right is where most of the people who are really making these moves are contenders right it's people who are trying to set themselves up for the playoffs not the teams that are out of it and so i'm looking at jonathan taylor as a guy that i'm willing to buy high on so at least earlier in the season the concern for jonathan taylor was the usage zach moss has been good jonathan taylor's not going to get the snaps and little by little we've seen that all change in week nine he had season highs in snap percentage rush share target share everything's looking good for him he's been the running back seven over the last three weeks and i think that that can get better i think he's potentially a top three or four running back rest of season uh i mean I don't think there's going to be all that much separating a guy like Jonathan Taylor and maybe Travis Etienne and some of these other guys who are, you know, top three, top four right now. So if I'm a contender, I'm willing to go and get him because I think what you want to do at this point is you're not necessarily looking for guys to buy low on and hope they cash in later. You're already a contender. What you want to do is go buy high on elite talent and make your good team a great team and make sure that you're able to win that championship. And I think you get a nice little buy low window after week 10 because he goes on buy in week 11. So there might be some of those teams, maybe someone who has them is like, "Ah, I really need to win this week to get into the playoffs. I'm willing to sell Jonathan Taylor and just get back some starters in exchange. I think that that's something that's very doable. Only two teams with a winning record on the Colts schedule remaining. So there's going to be some game script here where Jonathan Taylor can run out the clock, still get plenty of that passing usage. And then week one of the fantasy playoffs, he goes up against Pittsburgh championship week. He goes up against the Raiders. Everything just looks really good here for Jonathan Taylor going forward. Yeah, it's a great call, especially on the bye weeks. I I like, that sort of strategy of like later in the year, those bye weeks are even more crushing for a team that's trying to make the playoffs. So go ahead and take advantage of it. If you're in a spot where you can Erickson, Jonathan Taylor actually jumped up four spots in the consensus rest of season rankings in the last week. Uh, He's now up at RB five, actually in half PPR. Do you think that's too high, too low or just right? I think that makes sense. You know, he's starting to really carve out that RB one role. And I still can't like, I look up every time at like the rushing yards leader that I see Zach Moss at number two. And I'm like, how is that possible? But Zach Moss, you know, I saw his lowest snap share of the season last week. Jonathan Taylor saw his highest snap share. So just continuing to lean more and more on JT in this offense. So um, yeah, I think that he's kind of just back to where we kind of hoped he would have been, you know, if he had not, you know, started the season on the PUP list, you know, he was going to be a top five running back and now he's kind of back um, where he was supposed to be to start. Now, Erickson, your top by low running back is actually the guy I was referencing earlier. He's the most traded running back in fantasy in the last couple of days. Yep. I believe he was the guy I talked about last week too. And it's Tony Pollard. Um, look, guys, he scored against the Eagles. Got called back because of a penalty. So I know everyone's looking at the box and be like, this guy can't score a touchdown. He sucks. No, he literally scored against the Eagles run defense, who nobody scores against, but it got called back due to a legal formation. It wasn't even a holding penalty. It was a legal formation. <laughs> so Tony Pollard is playing the Giants this week. The Cowboys are, checks notes, 16-point favorites <laughs> at home. <laughs> Tony Pollard can't score a touchdown this week. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I'll take, you know, we'll all take massive L's on Tony Pollard. But the upcoming schedule for Dallas, where they're playing teams that they should totally run over, the Giants, Panthers, Commanders, they're going to be playing positive game script. And we've seen this Dallas offense be willing to run the football when they're up big. The last two games, Dallas has been different because they've been playing in more back and forth contests. It's been more competitive, which is why they've been throwing the ball more aggressively. Against the Rams, they threw the ball more aggressively. Against the Eagles, they threw the ball more aggressively because those were the matchups called for that. The Giants' secondary is not that bad. Their run defense is horrible. So I think this is the week where you got to get Tony Pollard like because the buy low window is going to slam shut after they play the New York Giants. And I think that it makes sense for Dallas to get Tony Pollard going because 
I think that he's going to be part of their reason they have success and, and potentially make a playoff run here if they get a balanced running attack to go along with Dak Prescott, who's playing much better since their bye week. So for me, Tony Pollard, again, he's still seeing an elite usage. I think that's going to finally come around for him. So I'm going to be buying Tony Pollard. So yeah, all my teams are going to have Tony Pollard and B. Sharp Robinson um, on them from this week onward. So I'm looking forward to that. Alfredo, Tony Pollard, RB9 in the rest of the season rankings. Where do you have him? I actually have him as running back 10. I was just checking that out right now. And uh, I mean, I th- also think it's just good to be fluid too on these rankings, right? Like I think that Tony Pollard is still that guy with the potential to be a top six or seven running back rest of season. It's it's just crazy to think how things have gone for him. Obviously, he can blow up here over the next couple of weeks against New York and Carolina. But uh, this is an interesting stat that just stood out to me. Ian Hart, it's over on Twitter posted that Tony Pollard has gone an NFL high 136 touches without a touchdown. I mean, at some point, like something has to give, right? Like it has to. And so, yeah, to me, I think having him around that running back 10 is just fine. If the touchdowns go up and that passing usage stays there, you're looking at a guy who can continue to trend upward. Let's get to the sell high running backs. And Alfredo, I'll stick with you for your top sell high running back. It feels like this dude's just been a sell high every single week of the season. And we're just, we keep repeating it over and over and over and over. Raheem Mostert. And we already talked about him once on this show. So this is like the second time we're talking about Raheem Mostert being a sell high. And uh, it's kind of the inverse effect of Tony Pollard. We talk about he's got to score a touchdown eventually, right? Raheem Mostert, you're looking at that law of averages. He's got 13 touchdowns in the season. It's just, it's absolutely wild. And if there is an offense, and I'll say this, if there is an offense where he can keep that going and keep scoring touchdowns, it's Miami. But we're also looking at, you know, first part of the year, there was no Jeff Wilson. Jeff Wilson's back. He's not been very good. And then Devon Achan starts to play really well, and then he's out. And so everything has kind of been the perfect circumstances for Raheem Mostert. And he still never, he hasn't really lived up to that early season value that we saw there where everyone was saying, hey, it's time to trade him, time to trade him. The offense has slowed down a little bit, and I think that the Miami Dolphins offense really misses Devon Achan. I think that he brings just another wrinkle to that offense that teams cannot prepare for. When you have Waddle, Hill, Achan, and Mostert out there on the field at the same time, you have absolutely no idea who to cover, and there's so much speed everywhere. So I think that because of these offensive struggles, when Achan comes back, he's going to be really heavily involved. Uh, I, he's expected to return in week 11. And the other running backs that have been part of it, Jeff Wilson, Savon Ahmed, they just haven't been good. And then overall, just for Miami, the fantasy playoff schedule for the running backs is not a great one. The Jets, the Cowboys, the Ravens, three really tough teams. So if you've been riding the Raheem Mostert wave and getting those touchdowns and winning your matchups, it might get a lot more challenging for you in the fantasy playoffs. You you beat me to that point. I was just going to mention the schedule because there's been a lot of talk, you know, in the last week or two about the fact that this Dolphins team so far this year, the pattern has been they have struggled against good teams. And those are three at least really good defenses and two pretty good teams in that fantasy playoff stretch. So like to what degree would you say you're considering that as a factor when potentially selling away Mostert? Well, I, I have to because if I have Mostert on my team and considering where I drafted him, it means I probably have a really good record, right? Like cause I got a, a top 10 or 12 running back so far this season without really having to pay up for him. So likely my fantasy team is good. I'm a contender. I'm going for a championship. For me, I have to look at the playoff schedule and it's you know like how all the NFL coaches say we're 1-0 and or we're 0-0 and or whatever it is. Like When you get to the fantasy playoffs, none of your previous record really matters unless you get a bye week first week. You have to win every single week. And if you're saying, well, you know, I can wait for the next, you can't. You can't. You have to win. So yeah, the fantasy playoff schedule matters a lot for me. Erickson, who's your top sell high running back right now? Yeah, look at Raheem Mostert. It's funny. Like, I feel like he could be a landmine player where, I mean, if you had the luxury, you could just drop him and it could t- potentially nuke another player, another team's roster if they have to start him in the fantasy playoffs. So, again, try to trade him first. But for me, it's uh, Alvin Kamara. You know, he's someone that I've written about in the fantasy football forecast about selling high on just because I didn't think that his workload was sustainable. When he came back from his suspension, he was averaging like 25 touches per game. Like he was leading the NFL in touches per game, especially through the passing game. And what we're seeing from the Saints offense is they want to spread the wealth. Like they're getting, they got Juwan Johnson back last week. And what happened, Michael Thomas got like zero targets in the last game. And Juwan Johnson had a big role in the red zone. He scored a touchdown. Taysom Hill is eating into that red zone role as well. He had six red zone carries last week. So where are the touchdowns coming from Kamara? Where are the touchdowns coming overall for his outlook? He still has a bye week coming up after they play the Vikings. And the Saints 
overall schedule for running backs is really hard. It's one of the bottom schedules for running backs for the rest of the season. So Kamara, again, if you look at anything that's points per game, total points, basically since he's come back, he's at the top of every single list. So I would sell him because if you just look at the track record of, again, we've talked about this on the show before where all of the older running backs have been horrible when it comes to efficiency. Like they have not been efficient rushers. It's really been volume that has saved them in the most part. And that's what's been part of Alvin Kamara and why he's been so productive, especially as a pass catcher. But there's a lot of weapons on the Saints offense. Like they like to give the ball to a lot of different guys. Chris Olave was the one that scored last week. He had eight targets. Michael Thomas only saw one target. Is Michael Thomas going to see one target every single week? Probably not. So that's probably going to go up again. And the fact that Taysom Hill's involved in the red zone. Jamal Williams is getting more involved. They like to involve Kendra Miller here and there. And then Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill led the team in carries. Not Elvin Kamara. He's the starting running back. So the Hill rule's not going away because it's working. Like he's scoring touchdowns, throwing touchdowns every single week. So for me, Alvin Kamara, as an older running back with a bad schedule, doesn't have a clear-cut red zone role. If you're not scoring those touchdowns, like... I feel like there's going to be issues with him moving forward. So for me, Alvin Kamara is still high. Alfredo, where do you have Kamara ranked? He's RB7 in rest of season rankings. That's exactly where I have him, RB7. I think that he falls right along. I'm looking at it right now. I think he falls right along the lines with some of these guys like uh, Brees Hall and let me see who else. Brees Hall, Derek Henry, uh, Saquon Barkley, Tony Pollard. I think he he remains in that range because you're, you're not getting the, the same kind of touchdowns that you want the goal line carries but the, the thing that's keeping him afloat is that passing volume and i think that you can kind of look to one thing that anchors all these guys that are in that range of like what keeps them going and so the passing volume is nice for alvin Kamara, but just i think that so far we're lacking that upside that the touchdowns bring so that that's why i keep him in that range we'll get out of there on that thank you for joining us again alfredo thank you everybody for tuning in for alfredo and erickson i am ryan warmly we'll see you again next time